Good morning. Uh, happy fourth holiday weekend. Uh, that song reminds me of the great country we live in and all the beauty across from east to west, north and south. There's beauty in all parts of the country. And uh, a big waving flag reminds me of how fortunate we are to live in this country of the free and to have a Father in heaven who is watching over us, uh, even in small numbers, wherever we are. So wherever our church family is this morning, welcome. Get ready to worship in, in wherever you are. Open your hearts to what God is speaking to us. In God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll have our call to renewal, to renew our hearts this morning. The confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now with the, the peace that Christ offers us daily, the peace of Christ be with you. Today the reading and prayer, the reading will be from Proverbs 14, verses 1 through 6. Every wise woman has built her household, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. The one who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord. 
but the one who is perverted in his ways despises him. In the speech of a fool is a rod for his back, but the words of the wise protect them. Where there are no oxen, the feeding trough is clean. But an abundant harvest is produced by strong oxen. A truthful witness does not lie, but a false witness breathes out lies. The scorner sought wisdom, there was none, but understanding was easy for a discerning person. Shall we pray? God of delight, your wisdom sings your word at the crossroads where humanity and divinity meet. Invite us unto your joyful being where you know and are known in each beginning, in all sustenance, in every redemption, that we may manifest your unity in the diverse ministries you entrust to us, truly reflecting your triune majesty in the faith that acts, in the hope that does not disappoint, and in the love that endures. Amen. Our scripture reading is found in Matthew 7, verses 15 through 23. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell, the flood came, and the winds beat against that house, but it did not collapse because it had been founded on a rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the flood came, and the winds beat against the house, and it collapsed. It was utterly destroyed. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed by his teaching because he taught them like one who had authority, not like their experts in the law. The good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. So if everybody would stand, we're going to do one from Vacation Bible School. <laughs> this is the fun part. <laughs> so if you'll stand, please, and follow along with Miss Clara. She knows, she knows the hand movements. Wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rain came tumbling down. The rain came down and the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. And the wise man's house stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rain came tumbling down. The rain came down and the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord 
Hey, church. Uh, so glad that you're here with us today. I know that I'm not here with you in person, but this is a way in which I could continue on uh, wrapping up this sermon series as I'm on vacation, enjoying the hot summer sun in Oklahoma. I hope that you've had a great week. Uh, and that your days are, are, while they seem very long and that we're distant from each other, that uh, we are edging our way back into a community, uh, back together. So today we look at a community built on a rock, a rock that is firm, that is foundation, that is solid. We have been discovering through the whole entire Sermon on the Mount this understanding and this movement of Jesus talking about what the kingdom of heaven looks like and how we are supposed to move in our ebb and flow in that kingdom. And in this empire that God has created uh, of vast uh, love and growth in, in the spirit. And that we are not boasting of ourselves, but boasting of those who are poor and weak and needy. Those who are the vulnerable in our community. And that we are seeking out to, yes, go against the grain of our very society, but looking at what it means to be the very faithful followers of Jesus. And we must, as Jesus ends his sermon to remind us, it must be set upon a firm foundation. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, from you, all blessings indeed flow. We ask that the Holy Spirit come upon us here in this time, in this place, and move in us and breathe in us and restore us once again, letting us know that we indeed need the sure foundation of Christ in our life. And now, may the meditations of my heart, my mind, and my soul be of glory and honor to you. In this I pray. Amen. So a community built on rock, and if you know anything about uh, building, you know you have to have a good foundation. Uh, and you've probably heard this sermon many, many times in this text, many, many times. And hopefully, if this is something that sounds the same, it is something that continues to recenter you and recenter your focus on where your foundation needs to be. Earlier this week, I had a conversation with an individual, and, and they reminded me of what I have been taught in understanding that our foundation, everything that we do when we are adults, is shaped and formed at our youth. And it is our foundation in which we live on. And some of us feel like our foundation has been ripped out from underneath of us. And we look at what this foundation means, the foundation of our faith. And it's not just that we believe in Jesus. That is part of it. We saw last week that it's not just that we can call him Lord and we could do miracles in his name, but that we have this action, this growingness in us that we move indeed in the spirit. So we believe not just in Jesus, but we live out his love in his peace, his joy, his faithfulness, his generosity, his self-control. It is what Paul calls the fruit of the spirit and we live them out in action. And James tells us that faith without action is dead. And Jesus is telling us the same thing, that our motivation has to come from our inwardness out. And so foundations are very interesting because, it, like I said a moment ago, is, is that if you know anything about foundations, you have to have a strong foundation for a building to stand. And Jesus has been setting that up this entire time, this foundation in which the church has to stand, a, a foundation that is not like shifting sand, a foundation that is not going to be ripped out from underneath us, but a foundation that is sure and solid. And that God's kingdom indeed will reign in this foundation. This foundation that is built from Jesus. You know, we find later that, that Jesus says to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. And it is through, G through Peter 
who has a sure foundation in Christ that the church is built. Peter is the one that offers the first message to the whole of the world at the day of Pentecost and reminds them where their foundation is. So sand is very weak. If you've built anything on sand or shifty ground, you know that you have to dig down very, very deep and sometimes get all the way to the bedrock before you can actually uh, build a foundation. And you build, you bore these holes into the ground and you put these pillars in there. And do you see the imagery that I'm building here is that even, even then you still have to have these pillars of foundation that you stand on, this good tradition that we stand on, this understanding that Christ is indeed the sure foundation that we stand on. He is the pillar that we stand on even when we try to build on sandy ground. And I know that might be a hard, a hard stretch for this passage of Scripture, but that's the reality is that we know that our foundation has to be built on Christ. On solid rock we stand, right? It is Christ we stand. Rock is, is actually hard to build on. If you, I know that we have a, a concrete worker in the church, and he would tell you that it is hard to build on rock, but a lot easier to build a firm foundation upon rock. And our foundations themselves from concrete is rock. And we build our houses on them. We have, we have figured out how to build houses that are hurricane safe and ready to weather the storm. That, that won't be destroyed. But the thing is, is it takes some work to build upon a rock. And once you get your house built upon a rock or your structure built upon a rock, it is really hard to bring it down. Built on a rock, it's going to stand the storm. And churches that are floundering must ask the question, and I'm not just saying us, I'm just saying a church in general must ask the question, if we are foundering, is our foundation still firm? Or have we started to, to try to move our foundation and believe in our own understanding, in our own ways? You've heard a few moments ago, even the wisdom literature and Proverbs, it, is, it says every wise woman has built her house, household, but a foolish woman tears it down with, with her own hands. And this is what we do. In, in, in wisdom literature, uh, uh, wisdom is considered and called lady wisdom. And the wisdom of God is, is, takes on this, this nature and this character of great wisdom. And so uh, we find uh, the language of the sages using this language of, of women, of understanding that we talk about how wise women are. There are wise men, but there are very wise women. And we know that a, a, a mother can destroy her household like that just by the words she uses and the direction in which she guides the entire household. It is all, it is a, it is a husband and a wife guiding if you're so lucky to be in that household. And then Jesus moves on to being hearers and doers. You see, we, not, we must not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And, and doers of the word isn't just giving it namesake, but it is actually living it out. Like James reminds us over and over that we have to live it out. We can't just sit back and expect it all to happen. But we are called to be agents of reconciliation in this world. We are called to be a gospel community pushing back darkness. We are not to sit on the sidelines and make our mockery statements, but we are to actually get involved in people's lives and really set them free from the bondage that they have been encapsulated in because of the world and the society in which we live under. 
So Jesus gives us a foundation to stand on in the entirety of the Sermon on the Mount. The entirety of the Sermon on the Mount is this foundation that Jesus is building for us. And he's saying at the very end of how he's wrapping it all up and he's giving this illustration about uh, about the the storm and it being a weathering situation and whether whether or not the church can stand or fall. And he's reminding them that the words that I have just spoken spoken to you because he asked the question in a moment after this is do you understand what I have just taught to you and that is this understanding that this I've given you a foundation in which to stand on so stand on it and move now we 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 would probably think to to assume that how can you move if you just build something and, and don't you think it just should stay there? But the reality is, is think about, think about the foundation of our roads. Dirt roads are horrible to travel on. Concrete roads are great to travel on as long as they've made it pretty smooth and asphalt is amazing to travel on, right? But underneath all of that, there is a sure foundation, and we know when that foundation is not strong or it's weak, the road gets bumpy and it gets brittle, and it is hard to travel and traverse. And so we have learned, even in road building, the ways in which that you have to build a sure foundation. And Jesus has given us this in Matthew chapter 5 through 7, is this sure foundation in which to stand upon. And may we indeed stand upon it. May we understand that even Paul himself is standing on this gospel message that Jesus is the sure foundation. And all the ways in which Paul is trying to explain things to the church is pointing back to this gospel understanding. A gospel community, as a gospel community, we will stand on a firm foundation there's no if, uh, if, uh, if, ands, or buts about it. As a leader in your church, in your community, as your pastor, we will stand on a firm foundation. We will be rooted in this gospel text. We will be a foundation. We will have a firm foundation that is, that is solid in Christ. And we will push back darkness and we will reach our world and we will love others because Christ has loved us first. We will love those who the world loves to hate. And it is truly the wisdom that we find here that Christ has given us that the church has been established on. This is wise wisdom that has been given to us from Christ. We have to remember that it's not about us. So oftentimes we make worship about us and we have been warned about that even in uh, Matthew chapter 6. But it is about everybody. And you've heard me for months now continuously saying through all of this that what it is all about is caring for one another and caring for one another is loving each other. And this is what we are called to. This is the foundation in which we are called to. We know that Jesus would later on give the commandment to love one another. And the entire foundation in which it's all been built, is been built on love and God's love for all of his creation. So it is not about us, but doing God's will as a gospel-centered community, pushing back darkness. We cannot sit still. We cannot sit on the sidelines. We cannot make excuses for injustice in our world. Jesus stood up radically against injustice. He stood up when people wouldn't stand up for those who had been sick for years and healed them on the Sabbath. When they were so concerned about Sabbath law and not concerned about somebody who hadn't been healed. And so we have a foundation in which Christ has given to us. We have a, uh, a mission statement 
of bringing hope and bringing transformation and changing lives. We can't bring hope or change lives unless we have a sure and present understanding of our foundation. And maybe today you need to renew yourself or make the first commitment to actually putting all of your life into Christ and on the foundation in which he has established the church. So we come to this moment declaring that we will be a gospel-centered community pushing back darkness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's nice to see Brother Chris's uh, face and uh, what a good message he has for us. So uh, we just pray that uh, we continue to lift him up. Uh, I'm going to our, our uh, joys and concerns now. There's a, a whole host of people always in our bulletin that we need to be mindful of, but I have several that I need to add to the list. Uh, of course, don't forget about the Tig family. Uh, Ruth Neal, one of our uh, faithful members here. Her son's memorial, Jimmy, will be today at Pickwick uh, State Park at 6 o'clock at Pavilion Number 5. So if you're able to, to be there, it's open for whomever wants to come. Ernestine Dunaway is dealing with some illness now, and just she, I talked with her yesterday. She's feeling good. But just reach out to her in whatever way that you can with a card or call. She would appreciate it. Uh, Marsha Winters had surgery on Tuesday, I believe. I talked to Henry this morning, and he says she's recuperating well. She feels pretty good. She's just tired and just in that recuperating mode. So, uh, Vicki, we probably need to get an address from you. I, they're not in my directory, so... If we need an address to send a card, Vicki, I know, can help us. Bobby Locke's sister died this week. And Eddie Robinson, who, who did attend here a few years ago, and Sandy and their boys, he has been diagnosed with melanoma. And I, as from what Ernestine told me yesterday, he's in the hospital at this time undergoing some, some, uh, some treatments. Jerry Wright, our neighbor, uh, fell a couple weeks ago and shattered his shoulder, so he's dealing with all that. And then we have a dear friend in Virginia uh, that I learned this yesterday. She's actually in our uh, national office of our postmaster organization, been there for years. She and her husband were just vacationing in Virginia Beach, and he drowned on Thursday. So uh, it was, I don't know all the details, I just know he's on life support now, and they have taken him off, and they're donating his organs, is Bill and Jerry Swarm. So as we go to prayer, uh, I'd like to remember all of these that I've mentioned, and I know there's many, many others that we don't know about. We all have something we're dealing with, especially in this time of crisis in our country. We have so much um, and so many issues right now that are, are heavy on our hearts. So will you bow with me, please? Dear Lord, first of all, I want to say how grateful we are to you for the opportunity to be here, to share your word, to listen to your word, and to do your word. May we look at our own foundations individually and see where we are in our journey. We come with pleading hearts, I know um, that's the way I feel for sure, to just plead with you to take control of our country, which we know you're in control, but watch over all the ones that are um, 
out there working on the front lines, out there in harm's way, doing whatever is necessary to protect us all in whatever service that they provide. And you know who they are. We all know who they are. The ones that give their lives daily or put their lives out there for us to be able to be free, to be able to be here. Dear Lord, we pray that you are with all those making decisions uh, that affect us all. Wherever they are and whatever situation there is, we just pray, we beg you, Lord, that you are in their midst, they turn to you for answers, and that they can figure this out at some point. I pray that we all are, will be responsible, we all are careful, we all will do our part and we all can individually to help this virus, to help this pandemic. We know our nation's in, cross, in a crisis, but we can do something wherever we are with what we have to uh, carry on and help the situation. I pray for our church here, our church family. I know it's it's just so difficult right now where we seem fragmented, we seem distant, but we know as long as two or three are gathered, you're in our midst. And wherever we are in our homes, wherever we're worshiping, Lord, we feel your presence and we know that you are there. May none of us ever feel alone. The hurting, the sick, the grieving, the struggling, uh, may they feel your presence. We lift all these names up to you that have been mentioned today and all those in our bulletin and all those unspoken requests too, Lord, that you know our hearts and you know what we need better than we know ourselves. So we ask you to go with us this week, Lord, and protect us, guide us, love us, lead us in the path that you want us to go. We ask your guidance uh, still always on Pastor Chris and his leadership here, and the role that you have for him uh, here. And we just pray that he does not grow weary in all that he's uh, going through now. It's been really difficult, I know, uh, for him to work through this process as we uh, have been apart. So we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings we have, and we need to focus on the good and see what we can do to uh, change the negative. I just pray your uh, blessings on everyone and the families that are gathered here and all those that are listening at home or wherever they are, and just um, lift them up, and we just ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Okay. So now we come to the announcement part. As you already know, Pastor Chris is on vacation until the 14th. Is that right, Vicki? Uh, he, he will still be away next Sunday, but uh, Bishop McAlilly will be uh, doing our message on a recording next Sunday, and he's a really good speaker for those of you. I know all of you have heard him. So we will be gathering here in the Fellowship Hall next week as we have today. So please uh, be here if you feel comfortable coming. And we understand if you don't, but we are so glad that, that the ones are here t this morning. On Monday night, of course, Billy and Pam have been blessing us with their uh, talents on Monday night with the piano and organ, and they continue to do that at uh, 6.30, I believe. But it's 6, I'm sorry, my, my fault. <laughs> six six o'clock, so don't miss that. Uh, the meetings that we have been having in the past will be resuming uh, in the near future, we hope. And, um, and the discipleship team, oh, we need to be thinking about the rest of the year. We need to think of events and ministries that we can do in safe ways. So I'd, uh, I, I think now that we will, we're ready for our closing song, if you want to stand.
as I've said, um, we're so glad that you're here today. I pray that you have a good week. And let's just remember to do what we can where we are with what we have. We can all do something. So hear this, uh, this sending. Go in peace to serve God and neighbor. Amen.